Hello students, we have solved all the questions from the NCRT. Now we will be solving few more questions. See the basic reason and the idea, the simple idea uh, is uh, only to enhance your knowledge and to increase your confidence and the grip over this chapter. Uh, whatever chapters we will be discussing, we will be doing the same thing like uh, we will be discussing few chapters from the NCRT like few like all the questions from the NCRT and definitely few more questions which uh, can come and even you should know. So just to begin with we will start with two or three words as we have discussed many keywords before I will discuss again one or two keywords only two I will take keywords ok. The first one given is brittle ok. Now what is the meaning of brittle? See we all know the meaning of brittle that it is getting divided into See, we all know the meaning of brittle, okay. Like uh, when we talk generally about non metals, non metals are very brittle, they break easily on applying the force. But when we have to define it, for one minute we have to think what has to be written, okay. So, what we will write in brittle? A substance, okay, just one second, I will just keep like this. A substance which breaks easily on oh ho oh, just see the my you see my line it has gone where I'll just draw it nicely yeah this one is better. So, a substance which breaks easily on applying pressure or force ok. So, how can we define brittle? A substance which breaks easily on applying pressure or force. So, non metals are non metals are what non metals are brittle now second one second one is my all time favorite which is reactivity series ok if we have to define reactivity series ok if we have to define reactivity series just let me know how you are going to define reactivity series in this chapter I have told this definition or discuss about this ample amount of time a number of times I should say from the very beginning I am talking about this reactivity series. So, what is this how can we define it reactivity series is a series it is a series which shows which shows which shows reactivity reactivity yes, of metals in the decreasing order in the decreasing order <coughs> what is reactivity series how can we define it reactivity series is a series which shows the reactivity of metals in the decreasing order in the decreasing order 
yeah don't worry about the hydrogen it is being added in between and this you are going to learn in the higher classes ok. So, this was the two keywords which I thought is not included in NCRT, but it is very important you for you people to know it ok. Now next, now we are doing few fill in the blanks which you might be knowing now because we have discussed much about this ok. So, we are discussing about the fill in the blanks ok. We will be discussing about fill in the blanks. <coughs> A substance that cannot that sorry <coughs> first one a substance that cannot be further broken into simpler substance is called as I am reading it once again please pay attention a substance that cannot be further broken into simpler substance a substance that cannot be further broken into simpler substance that means this is the smallest one from that we cannot break it. So, what is that we have read that atom atom is a simpler one we have read ample amount of things from this. So, here we have discussed the first one now coming to the second one elements combined together in the fixed proportion to form ok. We have done this before also I have explained you that elements combine together to form what atoms combine to form elements elements combine together in a definite proportion what they will form they will form compounds I am not explaining this more because we have discussed this thing yes. Now next one dash is the basic unit of matter that is the basic unit of matter we have discussed this thing in detail see. So, what is the basic unit of matter atom. ok. Atom is the basic unit of matter. Take now next one fourth one dash are elements dash are elements which have the properties of both metals and non metals ok. Dash are the elements which have the properties of both metals and non metals. So, what are these metalloids we all know this metalloids ok. Now, come to the next one fifth one just let me write the number it is fifth one now two metals which exist as liquid below 30 degree Celsius see the question is very interesting two metals they are talking about two metals which exist below 30 degree Celsius are. So, gallium and cesium ok two metals gallium and cesium are the two metals which exist below 30 degree Celsius ok. Now, next is six one mercury is the one which uh, you know it requires like at least more than this temperature ok. These are at the lesser temperature also these are at the in the liquid condition. Now, next one is dash is the only liquid non metal while teaching this chapter also I have discussed this thing many a times what is this number 6 I have a place over here that means a liquid non metal 
a liquid non metal is what bromine a liquid non metal is bromine now come to the seventh one a metal that can be cut with the knife i will not explain this we all know this is sodium now come into the next one a non metal that shows luster a non metal that shows luster so what is this iodine we have discussed the thing also that iodine is the uh, one and only one non metal which shows luster okay you know actually graphite also shows a bit okay graphite also shows a bit but not as much as the iodine shows okay now ninth one dash and dash metals are used to make electric cables okay they ha we have to write the names of two metals which are used to make electric cables electric cables means they are very ductile so what can be the two names it can be copper and of course aluminum again i'll tell you ag silver is more ductile than copper it is more ductile than aluminum or i should say it is a even a better conductor also but then why we are not using it only for the reason that it is very costly next day we won't be getting wires also why because it may get stolen okay now tenth one metals are dash conductors of heat we all know we have done this good okay now where is dash are bad conductors of heat means what good conductors of heat metals are good conductors of heat where is non metals non metals are bad conductors of heat which the thing are the things which i feel there is no need to explain i am proceeding forward now we'll move to true and false okay now true and false question number b i'll write two here one there okay fill the blanks was the first one where it is it is here question number first question number two is true and false now first one sulfur is a good conductor of heat sulfur is a good conductor of heat do you do you think it is a good conductor of heat because sulfur is a non metal or metal sulfur is obviously a non metal and so sulfur can't be a good conductor of heat okay so what should i write over here what we are doing true and false false sulfur is good conductor of heat so what it is false now second one potassium oxide is a basic oxide potassium oxide is a basic oxide potassium is what it is metal or non metal potassium is metal so metal form which kind of oxides it 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 forms basic oxide so what they have given potassium oxide is a basic oxide true come to the third one copper does not react with dilute hydrochloric acid very true we have done in this also we have done a uh, solving ncert copper plus h2so4 so4 give ra plus h2 gas is liberated so what i'll write over here true now fourth one silver will displace now enough with silver and displacing silver come where it is here will displace copper no it can't displace it is down copper is up so what 
Silver will displace copper from copper sulfate solution? No. You know the reason. Now, next one, iron will not rust. Fifth one, iron will not rust in the absence of moisture. That means if we keep it in a dry air, will it rust? We have done the experiment also. So, what it is? It will, iron will not rust. Not rust means yes, true. It would not rust if only dry air is provided because it also needs the moisture for uh, from the moisture it reacts with water and from the air it reacts with oxygen and then only the oxide of iron that means rust is formed or can be formed. Now next one is match the following. We will be able to fit over here, match the pairs. Now, malleability. This is the first one, second is acidic. Third is ductility, fourth is basic, fifth is jewelry. Now this side A is copper cable, B is magnesium oxide, C is diamond, D is aluminum foil, E is sulfur dioxide. Now and here I will be writing the answers right here only ok. Ok, malleability. Now, what is malleability due to what? The sheet forming of sheet. So, malleability means what? It is aluminum foil. I want to draw line this time like child you know how children used to draw, but we can't. Malleability is what? Aluminum foil. First car is what? Aluminum foil. Okay. Now come to the second one. Acidic. So who is going to form acid? Non-metals are going to form acid. So A ka kya ho jayega? Sulfur dioxide. Now third one ductile obviously copper cable copper cable fourth basic so who is left now basic who is going to form magnesium oxide i'll write mgo fifth one jewelry diamond jewelry we all know this okay so it is Diamond jewelry. So, this was our match the column. Now, we will proceed to the next question. Okay. Now, come to the next one. It is okay. Now, which of the following element will you be able to cut with knife? So, again sodium. Now, I will have to rub the blackboard. Just I will rub this totally. It will take only 2 minutes. Okay. So, which metals can be cut with the help of the knife? It is none other than sodium. 
okay now again we have take the correct answer take the correct answer where it is going totally tilted okay now take the correct answer is which of the following elements will you be able to cut with the knife i should not even read the options because we all know that is a, what we can cut with the knife is sodium okay come to the second one this one is good this non metal is found in solid state at room temperature this non metal is found in solid state at room temperature i am saying this is interesting because let me read the options fluorine what is fluorine fluorine is a gas what is next one is chlorine what is chlorine even chlorine is a gas what is bromine bromine is rather if you all remember it is liquid and last is iodine so iodine is the one which is found in the solid state at room temperature and rather i should say it has got it is the only non metal which has got more luster we know that graphite as graphite also has but less iodine is the one which has more luster now coming to the third one which of the following statements about graphite are correct let me read it again which of the following statements which of the following statements about graphite are correct now see first one it is a good conductor correct so i should write over here ki it is for this is first one okay so it is a good conductor is correct it is a good conductor and now second is it is used in pencil leads even this one is correct it is used in pencil leads okay so it is you know here how it is given like numbers are given and then they have made the pairs like first and second is correct first second and fourth is correct first and fourth is correct in this way so it is a good conductor and then it is used in i will just write the short form it is used in pencil also it is ductile no it is not ductile and it is made up of carbon also it is made up of carbon also made up of carbon also so this three includes i write as a third here this one is including means our first second and fourth is right okay so answer b will be right and our first second and fourth will be right okay and here they have given b okay chalo now come to the fourth one an acidic oxide will be formed by options they have given see acidic oxide first of all who will form acidic oxide non metals are going to form acidic oxide now see if sodium is non metal no so it won't form potassium is a non metal no it is a metal magnesium is a non metal no even it is a metal so what is left now phosphorus is phosphorus a non metal yes so obviously phosphorus is going to form a acidic oxide come to the fifth one and which uh, an acidic no no this one is done now fifth one is which of the following metals will displace iron from its salt solution theek hai again reactivity series they have given gold gold is at the last gold is at the last there is no way no reason don't even have to give a thought that gold can replace copper no not at all uh iron they are talking about theek hai then copper can replace iron where is iron here is iron and here is copper again iron is up 
No. Then the third option they have given lead. Where is lead? Where is PB? Where is PB? It is here. Okay. It is again what? Uh, what they are they are talking about iron. Again this one is up. No. Last is zinc. Where is zinc? Where is zinc? Zinc, 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 It is here and zinc is above than iron and so zinc will be able to replace the iron from the solution. Okay. Now, come to the next one now. Name the following. Next is name the following. Name the following. Okay. Now, name the basic unit of matter. Now it's very boring. Ah, this one. Now we won't take this. It's atom. We'll take some interesting thing now. Name a this one is very interesting. Just listen. Name a metal which will melt in your hand. Just again. Name a metal which will melt in your hand. Children. Gallium is a metal which will melt in your hand. Okay. One more thing I would like to tell you even cesium will melt on your hand, but then your hand will not be there. Why? Because it is very dangerous. Okay. It is going to harm. So, gallium is there, it will melt on your hand, but if cesium will melt, your hand won't be there. Okay. So, now come to the third one. What are the products formed when a metal reacts with water? What are the products when a metal reacts with water? See this one is little bit you know you have to pay attention uh, name the following. See third one I'll have, I want more space. See metals first of all they react with water. Okay. They can be, it can be hot or cold water. Okay. The product which will be formed will be same. Okay. Now, this is A. Now, B. Metals plus steam. Okay. Now, when metals Now see, whenever metal reacts with water, what is formed? Hydroxide. Metal hydroxides are formed. I have told this thing in my lecture also. Metal hydroxide will be formed and H2 will be released. But when metal reacts with steam, what will be formed? Metal oxides will be formed. Metal oxides will be formed and H2 gas will be liberated. We have done this reaction also. Like if I take the metal, okay? if I if I take the metal, suppose if I take Mg plus 2H2, I am talking about water now. So, what will be formed Mg OH twice plus H2. What is formed? Metal hydroxide is formed and if I take Mg plus H2O, okay, steam, this is steam. So, what will be formed? Mg O plus H2 will be formed. Means when metals are reacting with water, what is formed? Metal hydroxides are formed and when magnesium reacts with steam, 
magnesium oxide is formed ok. So, now come to the next one means what are the products either metal hydroxide and hydrogen or metal oxides and hydrogen these are the products. If the question is asked in this way that which gas is liberated then obviously hydrogen gas is liberated. Now come to the next one. Now next is list the conditions necessary for rusting. List the conditions necessary for rusting. Two conditions are necessary for rusting. What is that? Which number is this now? Fourth number. For rusting two conditions are necessary. What? Moisture should be there. plus air should be there ok. In absence of moisture also rust will not form and in absence of like both the things are very very necessary. Uh, we have performed like we have I have explained one experiment also uh, and which I will be explaining again uh, if the question in advance. So, first of all what was the question over here? what is required, what are the two conditions which are very very essential for rusting. So, moisture and air both are equally important for rusting. Come to the next one now, name two metals that are highly ductile. This what we are talking about these are name the following. So, one word answer type of things name two metals which are highly ductile. So, which is more ductile now copper is ductile, aluminum is ductile ok even silver is ductile, but they have asked only for two. So, we are going to write only two. Now, next one <coughs> which non metal is a good conductor of electricity, which non metal is a good conductor of electricity. This also we all know graphite is there which is a non metal, but still it is used as electrodes why because it is a very good uh, conductor of electricity. Now differentiate between the following. <coughs> 